Hello, my name's Andy and welcome to the garage. So here we have two Ford Mustangs, Matchbox Specials. Look great race cars. I was going to just do that orangey red one. There's a bit of damage to the glass so I thought I'd do them both and get at least one good one out of the two and another passable if I can't do anything with that glass. Plastic bases, die cast bodies, they do look great. I've seen some Mustangs racing in America before and they do sound great as well. So let's get on with it. Right, finish the drilling on our two specials. What you gotta do is be very careful because it's easy to damage that. At the front end, get your small screwdriver right in. You can't press on the wheels and just lever up like that and it will pop that should be ready to go now first one's apart suspension and the wheels were already out there's the second wheels and the axle there's a cockpit with a nice roll bar and the glass just pops out so that's one done there. and she's up and that's not bad base is well rust suspension's well rusty wheels are out whoops yeah there we go so there we have our two Mustangs, one with a red interior, clear glass, one Ford. Two bodies, two plastic bases, two rusty suspension units, probably some bent axles and wheels and a black interior. Okay, we're just going to take a look at our Mustangs before we put them in the car stick. This one is heavily chipped. These are 1983 models, so they're about 40 years old. Maybe a bit of rust and pitting at the back there. But apart from that, not too bad. Again, this one's um, not fared too well either. Heavily play worn, but not the wear under the wing there that the other one's got so I'm not expecting any trouble from the bodies now the glass both look quite good to be honest this one's got a bit more of a shine to it but that's not a problem this one has got those cracks there but um, we'll see what we can get away with with that both have perfectly Good interiors, race seats, one seat, roll bar. I don't think I'm going to touch them really. Just give them a clean. The suspension units are both rusty, so they're going in the car stick and we'll rust proof them afterwards. I'll just show you one wheel, they're all the same, they're just one. But there's a chance of a bit of detailing. All around there, look, if you can see, there's the tie lettering, but it's all in black at the moment. That one's perhaps a bit better if I put my hand behind it. Yeah, you can see it there now. All the ties look like that. One model seems to have had a bit more play wear than the others, but not too bad. So they'll just be painted. Both bodies are plastic, both exactly the same. I think just put them in the um, ultrasonic cleaner and see how they come up before deciding if to do anything with them at all. Chance of a bit of detailing, we've got the um, rear axle there, drivetrain, under engine gearbox and we've got some exhaust pipes coming out of the side on each one. So it, it's looking quite nice future for our Mustangs at the moment. 
Our two Mustangs are out the um, paint stripper. Not too bad. All this is going to brush off. A couple of scratches on it. Doesn't look bad at all as casting. Rust has come off the suspension springs. The white one, or what was the white one, does look the better of the two castings at the moment. But we'll soon see when we've got them polished and these posts drilled out. Okay, we're just looking at one of our Mustangs, getting it ready for paint. What I've had to do is a bit of work round the front here casting line there and within that groove just gone over the hood lid the roof line and gone all over all the panels with some 2000 wet and dry and I've drilled the holes now so that can go into paint the other Mustang is being used as the um, sizer for the decals and that'll follow this into paint when they're ready. I've just had to do a bit of extra work around the rear of the Mustang. There was a nasty line down there, I didn't like it. And on the inside of the spoiler too, there was a casting line. So they've gone. It's going to go back into primer, just a light coat. I then tend to rub it down with a bit of 5000 to make it silky smooth and um, this one's going to be blue, the other one's going to be white. So um, time to get on with that now, but looking good so far. As you can see we've got our two Ford Mustang <coughs> window units, we're just going to start to give them a bit of a clear, just using a bit of 2000 all around. This is the better of the glass, this one's a bit worse, but none of it's bad. Got the badge off this this one it's coming up quite nicely starting with some p1200 i'm gonna start on the next one just a bit of wet and dry the gloss of our mustangs is polished Finished off with some 5000. It's time to um, dip it in the floor polish. Just fits. I'm not doing the headlights, I'm leaving them to have something else done to them. So just pop that over there. In with the second one. And they are going to look lovely. These are wheels off our Mustang. I'm just going to paint them all black first. Because they are pretty, pretty tired, these um, Mustang wheels. It's just a matter of getting into all the nooks and crannies. Now there's some lettering on the wheels, I don't want to lose that, so it needs to be thin, thin coat. And they're off to look splendid when they're all done. And we're just going to do the lettering on the wheels. Now I have two choices here, I've got some white permanent markers. Um, brand unpronounceable and to one side I've got some white satin paint 
Now I know the paint will work fine, so I'm just going to do the first one with the paint. There's the S. It's going to be a slow job. <coughs> There we go. Let's see how we go with the pen. Well, it's quick with the pen, but it, the ink still runs into the gaps. Let's see if I've got a finer point. Okay, I've got a slightly different pen. Let's see how we go with that. Well, that's a bit better with this pen. Let's do the other side, see if we can get a clear run at it. The other thing that's affecting this is the, um, the quality of the lettering. It's not the same on every wheel. I think for me, the brush was better. It's difficult to say these wheels that the pen's been used on are as good and it does depend what pen you're using. So, um, for me, control the paint on your brush and the brush will be better. But the pen's quicker. You need a finer point than the one I've got though. Well, here we are. You can see we've got our two Mustangs and we are at decals. Now, part of the reason I've done two Mustangs Part of the reason I've done two Mustangs is so you can see the difference of putting clear decals on a coloured vehicle compared to the white vehicle which they were printed for. You can't, I'll just turn that so you can see it. You can see the perhaps the Motol, the Mustang are already on. And from my view, they look okay. I know you've got a bit of light. There, that's probably a bit better. You can see the back one. The key is when you start putting something like this motorcraft decal on the rear wing. So I think we'll do that one first to demonstrate how things can totally change. So into the water. Let's get our car front and centre. Here we go with the motorcraft decal. The cotton bud on that. Try and get that centered. The other thing is you can't touch some of these sometimes because you do ta tend to take a bit of the color off if you're not careful. So that's the motorcraft one done. Let's just show you how badly that will look on the blue car. Well, I'm not going to adjust it because hopefully you can see on the blue car, it's just gone black. You can't see anything. On the white car, it's motorcraft. So we're off to ditch that. So you do get away with pure black, but colored on clear on any other color is not a good idea. Right, what I'll do is I'll get on with some of these other decals now while you're watching. Right, here we go with the upper decal, the Mustang name. There is at least a bonnet line there to try and get this one centered and level. See, I just touched that M and there's a bit of the black move there, but that's good. I'm going to leave that as it is. Sometimes it's better to move them with a blade and just touch. Now I'm looking at that head on, 
trying to line up that with the edge of the lettering and that looks pretty good to me looks pretty good so that's a motul on what I have got at the side of me to help are some printouts of Mustangs original Mustangs I've seen on the internet to get it right You know, when I do these vehicles, um, I try to get them close to the original model, unless I'm going just for the pure original car look, the road going car. But sometimes uh, the things you just don't like and you, you wonder if it's an accident. So for instance, we're doing the Ferodo decal next. And to me, that just looks like it was slapped on and put on wrong. But it's the same on two different cars, as you can see. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put it straight because I, I just don't like that. Equally so, I didn't like this um, it's a Pirelli over grey there. I, I just think it spoils the line of the car. So um, if you can forgive me, I'm just going with what I feel looks right and looks better this time. Some motorcraft one on, and above that is a Bill Stein one. So that leaves us on this side with the champion one to go on next, just there. That's in place, that leaves the 28. Now I've got to cut the 28 in half. Right, here we go with the 28. You may have noticed I've lost my motorcraft decal there. I wasn't happy with that. I just touched it, it moved there. So I'm gonna just put a replacement one on there. So that is one side of the car done. I'll do the other side off camera. Read the blue car. I might leave it as it is, as a road going car with just a few decals on because the only number I've got at the moment is a Herbie 53 to put on it. And I'm not sure that's quite the right number for a for a Mustang. But I'll see what I can do, what other numbers I've got. I'll try and print them before the end of the video. What we need to do now on the Mustangs is do these backlights in red. And get these front lights done. Now the front lights, one set I'm off to do in Molotow pen, chrome pen. The other I'm just going to paint metallic silver. So let's get on with that. And there's the first side done. There we are. There's a white one done. I'll do the blue one now off camera. And there is the blue one. Try and get it in the light there. Finished as well. So we're on to the lights now. So here we go with the first one. You don't have to be accurate. It's going to be covered in the body of the car. I just wanted to show the comparison between the Molotow and just doing them a different way. Make sure we get it all done. Including the edges. And I'm going to paint the rear as well. I 
and I think these will be going in the blue Mustang. It is nice when you've got time to experiment. Try different ways. And there's one set done. Put them somewhere safe. So here we go with a chrome pen. Doesn't matter if it runs. Maybe better. You need a bit of pressure on this one. Well, no. That's why I say it don't matter if it runs. Because we've got suddenly got a great blob. Well, that's okay. So we can just take that. Just do both sides. And that's why you, I never use that pen direct onto a model. And they're off to be quite a bit shinier than the other ones, as you can see. There's our Mustang headlights, and as you can see, the Molotow ones are significantly better. So I am gonna Molotow the other side before I put it back on, because the, um, the quality difference is immense. Here we are with our Mustangs. The decals are on, off camera. On the Ford decal, the Mustang. What I had to do there actually made these really big and cut them down, otherwise, you don't get coverage in the corners. And these are pretty aggressive cars, these Mustangs. And I noticed that they were really big, like overly big almost, and they do give a good impression. I previously made some smaller ones and to be honest they didn't quite cut it. As you can also see I did some different numbers. Some Motorcraft on white paper, some Champion for Rodo and a new number 25 for the blue one. Now I did I did try cutting out a 28 one of the problems making your own decals is actually cutting that out because you don't want all that white showing in the back but, so i downloaded this 25 and as you can see it's on black it looks a lot better so nearly everything's the same i did ferrodo on the wings instead of pirelli if I'd done Pirelli, I'd have had to have had a white background there, but I did Ferrodo. Anyway, what I also did, and I don't know why I never thought of this before, was I went round the edges of the decals with a Sharpie marker pen, black in this case, before I applied them. And as you can see, I've got rid of that white line on the edge of the decals. Now, why I didn't think of that a year ago, I don't know. I always just touch them up afterwards. But anyway, there's a tip. And as you can see, there's just a bit of Mac pen left on the decals and it's worked really well. So I'll always be doing that in future. And if it was a blue car or a blue decal, I might use blue. Interesting, you can see now the Motocraft decal on each one is now okay. What I've done with the suspension is they've been cure rusted. The blue Mustang was with RS Pro blue gloss. The white Mustang was with Auto Extreme white gloss. Also, I went to clean the roll cages and the insides with some furniture polish. 
and they're actually in three bits. So I'll just put those back together. When I originally took them out, I thought they were in four bits. They go back together easily. So we're actually at assembly. Right, first thing to do is get our wheels on. Now, there's the rear of the car because the um, the rear wheels are bigger than the fronts. Get those fully stretched out. Whoops. And this clip just clips straight on. Clipped in. And she's a good roller. To see what she'll look like with the body on. That is going to be awesome. What I will do is just put a bit of super glue around there. Get that straightened up check everything's correct which it is let's dab a super glue on a stick around there because that has been on and off a few times that's stage one and there she rolls now I'm gonna put the red cabin with the white car. It was the other way around, but I like the red cabin, and it's gonna be the blue Ford glass. So the next thing is, get the glass in. That's fairly easy. It has to go over those front posts. There's a locating pin there. There's the Ford sign. What I think I'll do is I'll just pop that out again. Just going to put a bit of glue around that post. A bit of Gorilla Glue. Now this dries clear, crystal clear, so you won't see it. It's going to get a bit on a stick. Let's put it around that locating hole. Just put in a bit around that rotating hole so you can see that there. Maybe a dab more. Probably belt and braces that. We didn't have it before. And again the model has been disrupted. So in with our glass. see the glue spread a bit but that's fine and everything looks a-okay right turn that back upside down <clears throat> next we just need the cabin which just pops in like that and of course it's a pretty simple model that's just going to pop straight on there and we can pop the rivets in. Now I've already arranged the rivets. One, two, three, four. To go in. Actually, I think it was the other way around. So I'm just going to drop a bit of super glue into each rivet hole. This is um, 
fairly thick super glue. Right, put that straight in the bin. Check, I've got no super glue on my hands. Pop that on there. And then we're in with the rivets. Then we have our four rivets in. I'll do the other one off camera and next time you see them they'll be on the turntable. Well this is what we started with. Two very play worn Ford Mustangs, paint gone, decals gone, plastic wheels, plastic bases, glass damaged on the orange one in particular there at the front. Anyway, let's see how we got on, shall we? Because here they are now. Well, here are our two Zack Speed Mustangs, Matchbox Specials. Excellent looking cars, I think you'll agree. The white one was the primary build. The blue one was to show you a bit on decals and what you could get away with and what you couldn't. Not such a great car in its day due to reliability, but in 1983, Ford and Zack Speed teamed together to develop a 1.7 litre twin turbo Cosworth engined Mustang based on the Fox body shell. The Fox body shell wasn't great, but in this form, it looked really great. In 1984, that was upped. To a 2.1 litre 16 valve turbo which was a version of the 2.3 litre Ford engine at that time and it threw out 600 brake horsepower running on Goodyear tyres. What I will do is add a video link at the end of this video where somebody else tells a story about this Mustang Challenger to the Porsche 935 which at that time was one of the fastest road going cars ever i do hope you've enjoyed this video i've enjoyed doing these two mustangs come out really great i think it's my hundredth video on my channel so i'm really really pleased with it please subscribe if you can it costs nothing to subscribe I'd like to try, try and get to a thousand viewers, subscribers by the end of the year. So every one of you that presses that bust button, it's much appreciated and it's a big step forward for me as a whole. So once again, thank you for watching and I'll see you next week with another video. I'll leave you with the Ford Mustang Zack Speed.